Hey everybody and welcome back to Jim's Garage. It's official, our AI overlords are here and they're not going away. So what can we do? Well in this video I'm going to show you the simplest way i found to self-host your own AI instances. And that is you can choose any of the large language models to run privately on your infrastructure. That means your requests, your queries, your responses, your data all stays local without being sent to somewhere like ChatGPT to be farmed for more data with all the privacy concerns that comes with it. So in this video, I'll show you two options. One is a simple command line interface that runs in Linux. And the second is a much more user-friendly experience that looks pretty much the same as ChatGPT, which you can access through the web browser. Now to accomplish this, we're going to be using Olama. And Olama is basically the engine that runs all of the large language models. So when we get into this video and by the end of it, you'll be able to have a nice GUI interface where you can choose whichever large language model you want to run, and then you can execute commands through a nice GUI. And if you head over to their website, they've got some really easy instructions to follow. So if you simply click on download, you've got a few options. You can run this on Mac OS. I won't be covering that in this video. I will be covering, however, Linux. So you can simply install via this convenient script here into your terminal and you'll be up and running. There is also a Windows coming soon and also there's a Docker which I'll focus on in the second half of this video. So before you get into the deployment mode, let's go and have a look at the virtual machine. Now for anybody who watches my videos, you know I run Proxmox, but this should be hypervisor agnostic and you can even run it on bare metal if you wanted to. Now this virtual machine that you can see here, I've just called it AI, and if we look in the hardware tab, you can see that it's quite beefy. I've given it 32 gigs of memory, 20 cores, and about 50 gigs of hard drive space. Now this is overkill but it's gonna give me sufficient headroom if I want to run or at least store multiple models on this machine. So you can scale it down. The documentation recommends a minimum of eight gigabytes of RAM and the more CPU cores you throw at it, the better. But importantly, if you have an NVIDIA GPU, you will gain some significant performance improvements. The demonstration I'm gonna show you today is only using the CPU, that's twofold. I don't have an NVIDIA GPU to put this on, and also most of you probably don't, and a CPU is what you've got. Unfortunately at the moment this only works on NVIDIA, but there's a lot of noise around AMD and Intel support, so hopefully that will be implemented in the near future. So once you've got your virtual machine set up, or your bare metal, you simply need to log into it via the CLI. Now for the option one, which is to interact with the large language models through the Linux command line interface, I'm simply gonna use the convenience script here. So I'm gonna copy this, and if you want to see what it's actually doing, you can click on this link, it will take you to their GitHub, and you can see all of the commands that it's doing in the background. So if we head over to our terminal now, we can paste this command in, and hopefully by the end of this process, we'll be up and running. I'm gonna skip ahead, and I'll see you on the other side once this script has completed. Now when the installation process has finished, you can run the Alarma command, and you can see all of the options that you have available. So this will be able to do things like serve it through the API so you can connect remotely. We'll be making use of that in the Docker installation, but more importantly, you can pull and install new large language models. So let's go ahead and do that first. So if we head back to the Olama website, we can see all of the models that are supported. So back on their website, if we go to models in the top right-hand corner, you can see here that there's a ton that we can choose from. Now, there's a lot of noise recently around Mistral and their 7B model. So you can actually choose that one if you want. And so to do that, you would click on Mistral and then you'd get the tag here. And it's as simple as doing Alarma run Mistral. And for any other that you want, you would just simply look through here if you wanted the Mistral one and you do Alarma run Mistral. And then you've got Mistral downloading. So we're gonna copy one of these now, hop back into the terminal and then we'll get this running and then hopefully we can interact with one of these LLMs within the command line interface. Do note that some of these have got some really heavy requirements. Specifically things like the ATX7 here, you can see that it requires 48 gigabytes of RAM. So do choose one that's suitable for you. I'm gonna go back here and I'm gonna choose the Dolphin one, which A is uncensored and B is a lot smaller in size. 
Now for this demonstration, I'm going to run the Dolphin 2.1 Mistral just because it's really small and my internet's terrible. But obviously you can run any of the ones that I've previously shown you and just make sure that you have the hardware available to run it. So now if we paste that command, alarm will run and then the LLM that you want to use, hit return, it's going to go away and it's going to pull that. And once it's completed, you're then ready to be able to use it. So I'll skip ahead this part and I'll see you on the other side. Now that it's completed, we can do alarm a run and we can send a message. So what should we try? Let's say, who's the best home lab YouTuber? Now this might be a little bit slow because as I said, this is running on the CPU, but it should be up and running within a few minutes. Now, unfortunately, it doesn't look like I made the cut. So I'll just have to keep trying harder. But as you can see here, we've now got the Dolphin LLM running and it was really simple. So let's now hop over into something that looks a bit more friendly. And so hopefully this looks pretty familiar to you, albeit this is all running locally using Olama and their GUI. So how did I get here? Well, thankfully there is a Docker setup for this. So let's jump back into Docker and let's get this up and running. So heading over to their GitHub, Let's give them a star. And if we scroll down, we found all of the instructions that we need. So we can either choose to run this both locally. So you can deploy the LLM, the Olama agent and the GUI on the same Docker container. I recommend you do that just to keep things simple. Or you can make use of the existing server we just set up within say a separate Linux VM. And you can then host the GUI externally and reference that. And all of those options are down here. So for example, you can run everything together here, or alternatively, you can build the container and host it on a different server. I'm gonna take the option to do everything together, but the process should be pretty similar. So to get this up and running, the Docker image needs to be built locally, but thankfully that's not a complex process. So the simplest way I recommend to do this is you can either download clone this repository locally within Linux, or you can simply download the file from here and then copy and paste it over to your machine if you want to. Now over on the virtual machine, I've cloned the repository and copied all the files into a folder called Olama. And if you've watched any of my previous videos, this is kind of how I set out my compose files. Now all the files you need in here are ready. So all you need to do is to go into the Docker compose file and edit it if you need to. I'm not gonna be editing this just because I don't have a GPU and I'm happy with just setting this up using volume mounts. But if you wanted to, you could add bind mounts, etc. Now, if we have a quick look through this file, we can see that there's two services. There's the Olama, which is what we installed previously just through the command line. And then there's the web UI, which sits on top of that and connects to this back end. So with the Olama, you can uncomment this part here if you've got an NVIDIA GPU and it should automatically detect that and be able to use it to accelerate some of the responses. Other than that, it's pretty straightforward. It's just gonna create a volume called Alarma. So if we look at the web UI, this is where the build is required. So it's gonna build this and then enable the API. And if we look further down, it's gonna to connect to the Alarma base API, which is this container up here. Once it's done that, this service will be accessible on the IP address of the virtual machine you have on port 3000. Obviously, you could use traffic and get SSL. If you don't know how to do that, I've got a video on it. And we just need to add the traffic labels here to do so. I'm not going to focus on that in this video here, just because I want to get this up and running quickly. So now if we hop back into our terminal and we navigate to our folder, we should be able to run the sudo docker compose up dash d and get this deployed. And the first time you run that, it's going to take a while to create because it's going to have to download all those images and go through the build process. However, once it's completed, you should get the following message that both containers are started. So now with any luck, we can hop into the web browser and hopefully reach this. And so in this instance, I've navigated to my Docker IP with the port of 3000 and I've been greeted with the dashboard. So fingers crossed, everything's looking good so far. So now that it's working, how can we make use of this? Well, to get things started, we need to hit the cog at the top here. Once you click on that, you're presented with the models page and that's because we haven't enabled any models. So just like before, you need to go onto the Olama website and choose a model that you wish to run. Again, I'm gonna keep this simple and just run this small one because it's four gigabytes. 
So in this case, if I go to the website and I copy this part here, I can head back into the other website and then paste this value in. Now back over on the website, we can paste this value, hit the download button, and that should go away and pull the manifest. And we've got a progress bar here. So I'll see you on the other side once this completes. So now this is completed downloading and you can see that here. So we're ready to get going. So if we close this down, we can now set this one as the default. So this is now set as the default. And to find your models, this is especially applicable if you've got more than one. You can hit the drop down here and here you can see the Dolphin 2.2. We can do that and then hit set as default. And then we can ask a question. I don't know, tell me a fun fact about the Roman Empire. Let's see what it has to say. Now, <laughs> with all AI, I really like the fact that they've got this notification at the bottom. LLMs can make mistakes, very important. <laughs> That's definitely true. So there we've got a fun fact, but why don't we do something now more related to coding? So let's say, write me a Kubernetes manifest file for PyHall. And so here it is generating that response. And what's quite interesting is whilst it's doing this, you can have a look within your hypervisor to look at the system performance. So here you can see that out of my 20 cores, it's using about 50% and we're already up at 20 gigabytes. So you get a feel for just how hungry this thing is. And bearing in mind that this is a stripped down four gig LLM. So you can pretty much extrapolate that up to things like the 48 gigabyte model. So now hopping back in, let's see what it's done. It's created a deployment and that looks pretty good for a basic deployment. Obviously, we'd want to ask it to create some PVCs, etc., and probably a service and some default headers, but I don't know, that looks pretty good. And the best thing of all is, all of this is local to my environment. I haven't had to make any calls outside of my network, so all of my data stays with me. So hopefully, you now have everything you need to launch Open Llama and use one of the many popular large language models on your infrastructure. This is going to safeguard your privacy and hopefully give you all of the functionality of many of the big players out there. It's going to be interesting to see what your results are compared to things like ChatGPT, how mature this is. A lot of these models are not selling themselves quite at the ChatGPT4 level yet, but who knows? Is it a matter of time before it gets there? Will we see ChatGPT5 to overtaking it again? I don't know. It's really exciting to see how this evolves. Let me know if this is something that you're going to use in your home lab and drop a comment below. If you've liked this video, please give it a thumbs up, hit that subscribe button, and I'll see you on the next one. Take care, everybody.